hi guys and welcome back to my channel if you're new my name is empress d it's nice to have you if you're a returning subscriber welcome back family it's always nice to have you thank you for sticking around and supporting your girl okay if you're new to this page yes back to you new guys make sure you check out my page make sure you browse like the videos that you do like and subscribe to your girl's channel also make sure you turn on your post notifications so you are notified every time it is that I upload a new video for you guys. Well, you can't dictate my pace like the old people say. You can't study people who go help you when you're back against the wall. You can't study people who go pick you up in case you fall. If they don't like you, then you're doing something right. Just keep on doing it, doing it. Let them respect you for As you can tell from the title we are going to do a full face for beginners step by step if you are starting in 2020 and you really don't know where to start because the videos on youtube are a bit outdated i mean they're still using kind of the same techniques not a lot if anything has changed in the last year or two years but um this is just an updated routine basically for beginners very simple very easy step by step that you can follow okay so the first thing that I would suggest that you do before starting your makeup is to wash your face. So if you don't wash your face um, beforehand, just make sure your face is clean when you are starting out. The first thing that I am going to do is I'm going to go in with my brows. I like my skin to just be normal when I'm doing my brows with absolutely no products at all on my face. If you are a beginner, I would suggest that you actually start with a brow pencil rather than a pomade because you know that can be a little bit hard to master. I mean, I do use both of them, but for the purposes of this video, we will just be going in with the brow pencil from Technic, and this is basically what it looks like, and it's got a spoolie on the end right here. Don't have to get the Technic one, get one out of you. Beauty supply store, you don't need to get exactly what it is that I have, just that you should probably use a pencil rather than a pomade. If you're not sure what a pomade is, this is the Anastasia Bevel Hills one, and this one is in the shade chocolate. Start out with this rather than this. Okay. I would also recommend that you use a brown, either this brown or a little bit darker brown, rather than black. Black is too harsh to start out with. Okay, so my brows are kind of all over the place at the moment, so I'm just going to brush them in the direction that I want them to go. Then I'm going to go in with the pencil. So when I start to outline my brows, which is the first thing that you need to do, I always start at the arch at the bottom, work my way to the end and then go to the front. Then when I'm doing the top, I start from just about here, not all the way to the front here, just about here and then I work my way backwards. The reason why I do that is because you don't want the front of the brow to look sharp and boxed in as well. So you have to make sure you start it a bit off. So it looks natural and flows into you know that smooth transition pull my pencil down when I go like that but when I reach the arch I start to work my way in an angle all the way to the front and as I get closer to the front I go in an upwards stroke like motion okay. Right here, I am just trying to blend out the front of my brows. So it's nice and faded. Right guys, so this is one brow completed and I'm just going to show you guys how to replicate this brow over here. Now, full disclaimer, 
my brows are not the same. They don't grow the same or anything like that. So one goes slightly higher than the other one. That is a full disclaimer. Unless I shave off the eyebrow and make it identical to the other one, which it will look weird because it goes, this one grows at the top and doesn't at the bottom. And this one grows at the bottom and not at the top. So it'll be weird. And I don't do my brows a lot of the time. I like to keep a natural face. So you can imagine me walking out with one brow looking funny. No, I'm not going to do it. Okay, so now for your brows, I would recommend concealers. Everyone uses these LA Girls Pro Concealers. I would recommend that you go two shades above your natural shade for your under eye and try and keep it as close to your shade at the top to clean up, okay? So you don't have to use these, I just recommend them because they're really good and this, these are the ones that I started out with. I don't really use these anymore. I use the P. Louise ones but because you're a beginner, I'm not going to ask you to go out and splurge on things. These are like two pounds, um, two ninety nine US dollars, and the P. Louise base is ten pounds. Do the mess. These are good. Another one that is good as well is the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define Concealer. Now I used to use C13 at the bottom and C14 at the top, but my C13 is finished, so yeah. top, bottom. Right, so we're not really going to go into brushes um, today because I am planning a whole educational series. So what you will need is two concealer brushes or flat head brushes that look like this. I got these from AliExpress and I can link them below. It's a pack of six for something ridiculous, a little bit of money. Um, you can get these or you can get something from off of eBay, from off of AliExpress, again, something different or Amazon, you know, you don't need to splurge. Go in your local beauty supply store and there'll probably be, be some of these brushes in here. Right, so for the bottom, we're going in with toffee and what I normally do is I start in the arch work my way down and then move forward and just clean up as I go along. Right here I'm just outlining, this is not how it's going to stay, I'm just outlining it, creating that you know, guideline, and then I'm going to go back in and sharpen that up. Okay, just like that. And then what I normally do is just pull this a little bit down. And it depends on the look that you are creating. You can pull it all the way down and use it as a base, which I just might be doing. But what you would normally do right now is just blend it out. I also want to tell you guys about this brush as well. It comes in a pack of six, I believe. And these brushes, it's actually a brow kit and it comes from the Glam Supply. I will link their details or their website or something below. And these are perfect for blending out um, concealers. So all I do is I kind of pat and pull the concealer downwards. I could say it's stippling, but I'm not just pressing it in. I'm kind of pulling it down as well to blend it out. And I try not to go into my hairs. I try to go just as close as I can up underneath it and blend it out. If you guys notice, I kind of brought it out to the center. I'm just trying to make sure that it lines up with the front of the other one. So that's why I do that. It's a good tip for beginners so you know that your brows are leveled. Then I am going to use my other brush and I am going in with toast at the top. And I am starting out in front of my brow as well. Right, so all I'm doing is just pulling back my brush in a straight motion. 
just to make sure that I get my brows as sharp as possible. I create my brows so it's not hard to do at all as you guys can see all I'm going to do is blend out the top concealer as well and once that's completed I just go down the middle right here and get rid of that line okay so as a beginner you can use concealer or you have things like eyeshadow bases that you can use this one is from Amuse Cosmetics and this is basically just to make your eyeshadow pop but I'm just going to bring down my concealer all over my lid and that will be my base um, for my eyes Right, so if you're a beginner, you have the option of either setting this now to do your look or leaving it so it gets tacky. Now, as a preference for me and even as a beginner, when I started, I always preferred it tacky rather than it being set because my eyeshadow just did not stick. I don't know what it was, but it wasn't working out for me as a beginner. It worked better for me. My base was tacky. So it's up to you whether you want to set it or not. But to me personally, I would not recommend that you guys set your base. Right, so if you are a beginner, and I probably will repeat this in my later on video, I would suggest that you start very small with your eyeshadow palette. Now, Makeup Revolution, Colourpop, um, you know, those brands, they do really nice, you know, eyeshadow palettes and stuff. Go to your beauty supply store, pick up an eyeshadow. Nowadays, they're not making them as ashy as they used to, so you probably get a good eyeshadow for a little bit of money, okay? Now, for today, I'm using the Makeup Revolution one, and I've actually never used it. These palettes are like £4. They're probably, they're probably like $5 um, in the US, so these are good palettes to start with. Now, for a beginner, I would suggest a one shade eyeshadow look something very simple or something maybe two tone maybe a matte and a shimmer over it or something we're gonna just create something very simple and easy for you to do today just because you're a beginner and then obviously you can work your way up to doing more looks cut creases and all that stuff and you can also look to work into what's color but as a beginner I would suggest something more um, neutral or berry toned for getting started so this is a packing brush this is what it looks like it's kind of flat but it's fluffy as well I got this from off of eBay in probably like 2012 2013 um, when I wanted to do makeup wasn't serious about it and um, I'm gonna pack on and then I'm gonna use a different brush to blend so I have decided I have decided to use two shades today um, just to test you guys a little bit okay so we're going to use this matte shade right here and then we're going to use this gold shimmer shade right there okay right so we are going to start in the outer V of our eyes I'm just gonna be looking in my mirror right here kind of like turn like this so you guys can see but see right my concealer started to crease a bit I'm just going to blend it out so my look has no creases in it okay and that's done okay so what I'm gonna do is pack this on over the majority of my lid and I started in my outer beat and I'm kind of making my way in a circular motion packing that shadow on So this is a fluffy blending brush okay I got this off of eBay as well some years ago and I find that the brushes with these bristles are the best 
for blending okay especially when you're blending out a shade these are the best brushes and I'm going to show you guys how to blend out this shade so it's not as sharp as this 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 is not a cute look okay it's not so I go in small circular motions this is how I blend out the eyeshadow so it's not sharp no harsh lines okay all right so after you blended that you took away most of your shadow so you're going to have to go back in and pack some more shadows on so you're going to go so you're going to have to go back in and pack and repack that shadow onto your eyelid and that's one shade down right so next up I am going to go in with the gold shade right here and all we're going to do is we're going to pack that right here and pull it up we're not going to be cutting any creases on that like I said already we're just going to be doing very simple a little bit of color because color is my thing but not anything outrageous or outgoing like I would normally do And this is pretty much all we are doing with that. I'm going to go back in with the berry color over it to blend it out. Um, but this is pretty much the look that we're going to do. I know it kind of looks like all over the place at the moment, but when you pop on your liner and lashes and all that stuff, then, you know? So I'm going back into my berry tone right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on top of the gold and swipe. Okay, I'm swiping in to blend it out. And you see how it creates that third shade right there? That is what we want. That's what we want. How much better that looks? Rather than the harsh line. And that is pretty much it for the eyes. This is the NYX Vinyl Liner. NYX is also a good drugstore defined brush, but I should say precision brush liner. It's nice, okay? This gives you full control of where your eyeliner goes. And I'm just gonna show you guys how to create a wig. We're gonna start here and we're just gonna draw our line up. Now, I'm not creating a big wing today because, you know, we're beginners. I'm going to start at the front okay so you can start right on the upper part of your lid and basically just draw a line to meet your wing that's my line this is going to be my wing all I'm going to do is just pull that in Even if you're creating a look that does not require eyeliner per se, do a strip of the eyeliner, the liquid liner, before you place your lashes on there. So that, just in case you don't put it on properly, you know, there's not gonna be that gap that everyone can see, okay? That's a tip, because it took me forever to do lashes, and that's what I was doing, to hide the fact that my lashes look like shit. Yeah. Right, so your next step is mascara. 
and you need a layer of mascara for two things to prepare them for the falsies and also to coat them in black so that you don't have all that extra eyeshadow powder that got loose showing up underneath when you go to apply your eyelashes and you press them together and you look up and you can see all this all this color and stuff that I've got going on there so it's basically just to give it a coat for those two things so I apply my mascara from the roots and I wiggle and pull wiggle and pull just to make sure that the mascara goes in the hairs okay so now it's completely black so if you are a beginner you don't need an expensive mascara to me all mascaras are the same um, just that you should use a smaller one for your bottom lashes and I'll show you that when I go to do my bottom lashes but this one um, BLS volume eye mascara I literally got this at the market for a pound. The next step is eyelash glue and eyelashes. This is a AliExpress lash. I've used this like five times already. Um, I find that these are durable and they have something like 20 wears or maybe even more than that. I've tried all of the eyelash glues. I think there is out there to try. Okay, so my favorites are the Duo Glue, the one with the wand. And the Revlon ones. Now these to me work the best. I've got um, clear, I've got clear lash glue which dry down, it dry down clear obviously um, for when I'm not doing a look that requires eyeliner and um, I have the dark one for when I do have eyeliner on. Um, majority of my looks like I said I do cheat and put a bit of um, black eyeliner on but the reason why I do that um, use this clear one sometimes is basically because sometimes you struggle with your eyelashes I would suggest that you get a clear blue a transparent one one that dries down clear just in case you run into any problems putting on um, your eyelashes because you coat your lashes with the glue and you go to put it on and it might just flip up because it's not dry enough and then it completely ruins your look so always try and go for a clear glue just in case something like that happens if you have a dark look then it's fine to go in with the black one because that dries black okay I'm just gonna apply my glue and what I normally do is I put a lot at each end of the lashes just to make sure that they hold and then I work my way through the rest of the strip with the lashes and not so much glue. I find that it's not tacking enough in 30 seconds. Like it, it doesn't. I wait a full minute or maybe even more. Okay. So with the with the clear one, it looks like this. So basically, I know it's ready when it kind of turns blue. Okay. So what I would suggest you just do is go in with a black eyeliner pencil or any other color eyeliner pencil that you want to put on and just do that on your bottom eyelash line okay so I just I kind of pull mine down a little bit because I kind of you know I'm still afraid that I'll dig myself in the eye I'll just poke it out so I kind of just pull it down a little bit to make sure that I'm going directly onto the line and not under although I kind of like to go under a little bit but you should really only be lining your waterline Right, so you remember I said that you should go in with a smaller mascara um, on your bottom lashes. This is the AOA Skinny Under Lash Eye Under Lash Mascara. This is basically what it looks like and it is super tiny. This is what I use to have my bottom lashes stand out. Now whether they will because the places are bright, I take my pictures in a lower lighting and kind of zoom in on the eye so you can see them but whether you can see them in this video or not it's going to be another story. But I basically do the same thing here. I start at the root, I kind of just 
shake or tug I should say and pull. I have oily skin but that is absolutely no excuse not to moisturize and do all that stuff that you need to. I have learned the very hard way that I still need to moisturize so my skin has its natural oils and stuff and it doesn't need to overproduce okay because my skin was all producing and by an hour or two I would look absolutely oily and it just wasn't fun okay so for me the best thing that I have is the Cetaphil um, this is the moisturizing lotion it's for your body and face and it's for all skin type it's a lightweight hydration for everyday use fragrance free lotion okay so I literally use the tiniest amount I'm supposed to be doing a budget friendly video but I'm just gonna use this and then I'll show you guys the other ones that I use only because this is like my absolute favorite and this is what I just prefer to put on my face right now um, but this is the no pore blem primer and this is from touch and soul now this one is a little bit pricey but it's not as high as other primers okay it's still kind of affordable yeah but on a regular day i would recommend the elf potty primer or the maybelline baby skin in some pore way though or together together these are lethal like these are the best together but you can wear either or they're really good um, I do wear them quite a lot so as you can see this one is like it's nearly done and this doesn't really have much in there either but uh, for but for today I'm just gonna be using this one okay? okay so right now my lash glue is ready so showing you how to put on this lash is probably going to be very difficult for me I always need a small mirror that I can look down in and then I angle this like this to make sure that it's not my eyelashes are not sitting on top so I angle it and I place it in the center right there and then I go in I probably should be doing this with a I probably should be doing this with a um, with a tweezer so I'm just gonna go get a tweezer your falsies are on and you're sure that they are secure you then go in with your mascara um, on the bottom right so that is the lashes on you see how your eye just looks better now put the lashes on a lot better make sure that the primer goes into your skin so instead of what I'm doing here I should be doing this so I stretch my skin to make sure that my pores are open and I press in especially across here for me because I have really large pores So we got moisturizer on, we have primer on. So our next step is foundation. So my absolute favorite foundation is the Maybelline Superstay foundation. I am in the shade 70, which is cocoa. Now, as a beginner, um, this is um, affordable. It's affordable. If you think that nine pounds, um, 11, 10 US dollars is too much. When I started out, this is the foundation that I use. This is the LA Colors um, Liquid Makeup. This one is one one dollar on Shop Missy. I will link Shop Missy um, details below. But this is one dollar, and it's a really good foundation as well. So 
consider this um, on shop and say you can get a lot of things as well that you may need and I mean just to say as well I mean I'm, I'm talking about liquid foundations but as a beginner you should really use a like cream to powder foundation I'll show you one so this one is from sleek this is a cream this is a cream to powder foundation this is a cream to powder foundation and this is basically what it looks like okay guys or you should use a foundation stick now this is a foundation stick from revolution i know they're a bit dirty um but this one i use to contour sometimes because it's too dark for my skin okay but you should really be using these um rather than the foundations these are super easy to work with for beginners so try and get a um try and get a cream to powder foundation or a foundation stick i actually recommend a foundation stick for beginners but if you're adventurous like i was then just go ahead and grab um this on a budget or um something like maybelline superstay l'oreal true match i think the NYX um, can't stop, won't stop, although that one is a little bit more pricey than the other ones. They're all drugstore and they're kind of all affordable, so yeah, it's you. You can use a beauty blender, but you'd have to wet this to use it for blending. Or you can just go ahead and use a flat top brush like I'm going to do now because I'm too lazy to get up and wet the damp sponge to blend, okay? So at this point y'all know I'm oily already but I'm going in with the Super Jug Vitamin E Hydrating Mist and what I normally do is I normally spray my brush, one, two, three, just because it's mattifying and I'm still trying to hydrate my skin at the same time, although I have the moisturizer on, I just want to make sure that I'm not extra oily when I'm finished with all of this, okay? So applying your foundation, you should definitely stipple and not pull. Don't do that. No. Okay? So you should do this in a stippling motion. And that is basically just pressing the foundation into your skin. And sometimes it might seem like the foundation does not match your skin tone but you should always make sure that it oxidizes before you actually make that decision like right now you might think mm, is this the right shade is this the right shade for her this has always been my shade I mean it matches my skin I mean my neck has a bit of discoloration um, because it's darker the darkest part of my body but this is my shade All right, when I'm doing this I'm just trying to make sure that my brows are not affected so I go as close to them as possible without actually going on them Next up, we're going to move on to concealers and we are just going to go back to Toffee. Right, so I start with my foundation just right, right under my eyes and I tend to go along my nose and I go straight down like that. Okay, I'm going to do that again over here. And I don't really think that I have a big nose, okay guys, I mean, when you highlight and you contour, you're doing it to make your face look a particular way. Um, in this instance, when I highlight this area and then I contour it, it's to make my nose look smaller. I don't necessarily feel like I have a big nose and in the beginning, I never used to contour my nose because I just thought like it was a waste of time. But it does pull your look together and it does make it look sharp. So I started to do 
the highlighting and the contouring of the nose okay so I do my under eyes I don't really go all out like everyone does because I in some instances less is more okay and I highlight my forehead Again, just a little bit, a little bit on my upper lip because you know everyone has that shadow, and just my chin as well. Okay, and I might just have to go and put down some chin because I actually need it. So, depending on the consistency, you should let your concealer sit for a while. Mine has sat for three minutes, and I'm just going to blend it. When I'm doing this, I tend to look up when I want to get like close up under my eyes. And then, after I feel like I've gone up as far as I should, I look down and I blend that in as much as possible. Yep, then I come across here. I kind of go in an angle up across here, then I start right back where I start for the first one. Blend, look up. This is also just to make sure you don't dirty your lashes and all that stuff. Right, I check to see what's not blended, what is, and that's pretty much. Okay, so then we blend out the nose, then we do our forehead, again trying not to interfere with our brows, and I just kind of do this in a like arch, in an arch. Yep, and then my chin. Okay, now we are going to move on to setting powders. Now, there's translucent setting powders, there's dark setting powders, there's light setting powders, and then there's Buttercup, which is like a yellow setting powder. I live for the Sasha Buttercup setting powder. Live for it. Um, I'm not sure if it's drugstore like I got my first one from in a beauty supply store, which was 15 pounds, and then my second one I got from Amazon, which is or which was 20 US dollars. So. I'm not sure if there is a drugstore setting powder for me to recommend. I definitely won't recommend any high end that you have to pay excessive money for. But I would suggest that you, um, if you're a darker skin tone, that you get the setting powder, um, the Sasha Buttercup setting powder, or the crayon case, um, chalk dust. I don't think that there's a setting powder out there for less than at least $20 but I don't know if you guys know then let me know and I will probably test them out but as it stands I'm, I'm not I wasn't able to find one these are my two go to we have the chocolates from the crown case and the Sasha buttercup this is my second one and look it's almost it's almost gone all right so this is the one we are going to use today now just to say for darker skin tones and to prevent flashback I would recommend either one of these powders or the Cover FX um, setting powder. Simply because for me, there's no flashback. Um, I've, I've purchased translucent. Ah, uh, tell a lie. Tell a lie, right? Back up. So, you know how I tell you all about um, Shop Missy? You can get setting powders on there as well. The 
the other one I can't remember which one it is this one doesn't take my skin tone this one is um, soft light but it's 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 not the right shade um, so I got the like the one that looks like this I can't remember which one it was um, and that sets perfectly and these are only $8 so shop me say all the way all the way okay right so to set your highlights I do suggest that you go in with just a little bit of setting powder that first coat and then you can bake after but it will just stop you from basically looking ashy okay so I take a small amount and I just tap it in all over where I'm going to set okay so this is like the first coat I should say right and then we can actually bake so we are going to use the same beauty sponge but I'm just going to be using the other side and I'm going to go into my Sasha buttercup and I am just going to put my setting powder to set my highlights Okay, and that is pretty much that. Now I will let this sit um, for a bit and while this is sitting, I will now move on to contour. So if we're keeping it drugstore, I would suggest the Bonani, the Earth Glow. This is five because it's the darkest one for my skin tone. But guess what? I am all out of this, okay? I am going to go into the crayon case and I am going to use this color right here to contour. Now as a beginner, I don't suggest to use cream contours, I would suggest to use a powder to contour which is why I am using a powder. I can actually go in and cream contour as you guys saw I got, I have the foundation stick that I normally use but for the purposes of being a beginner we are going to use the powder to contour. Right so <laughs> let me tell y'all guys a story, the electricity went and I was sitting in the dark for 25 minutes. This is longer than I've ever kept this powder on my face, so I'm a bit worried that it might look kind of hard, but we'll see. So anyways, as I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted for 25 minutes, I will be using this shade right here to contour. Right, so all I'm doing is I'm tapping on that powder, and I'm going basically right around. Okay, so what I normally do is I'm going to put in towards the highlighted area right here just to make sure that everything is blended in. And this is basically just to set your foundation. Contouring also has um, some benefits towards it. For it, um, which I will go through very detailed in a later video part of my educational series i would normally start like right here as you guys can see it's a little bit darker sorry about the angle and i work my way up to my brows so i normally go in a line and i work my way up to my brows that's what i do to contour i just go right here and then we go on the other side Contouring your nose basically just makes it look sharp, okay? And uh, that is it for the contour. And now because I've overbaked, I'm going to dust away my powder. I 
recommend a setting spray. This one is from Morphe and in my opinion this is the absolute best setting spray that is out there. It is a mist, it does not come out heavy and it don't make you question whether it's going to leave your face patchy or not because other nozzles are an issue. They come out so strong onto your face, it's kind of like splashing water on there but not at all with the Morphe. This I think is $15. I think it's kind of affordable um, but there's there's other setting sprays out there that I'm sure you can use this is too expensive there is a makeup revolution one which I've finished mine that is like six pounds which might be like seven something US dollars you know check out makeup revolution because they're a safe bet of having everything that you want at a cheap price so I'm going to use uh, the Morphe spray to set my face, which is what you should do after you have finished baking. But a tip that I have learned throughout growing on my channel is that you should never be able to tell where your concealer and your contour starts and finish. So I normally just take my um, foundation brush and I just go back in to blend them out. Right where they start and finish, I just go back in and blend that out. I kind of always need this because I like a chisel drawer, but I go in and blend out my forehead and my cheeks. Okay. Once we have done that, our next step is blush. Now, if you're living in the UK, there's Primark and there is always blush. I wasn't sure about this blush at first, but it actually suits my skin tone, I feel, and leaves quite nicely. I'm going to be using this brush today. This one's from Primark. I think this one is, I didn't say Amazon, but I think this one was like three or two dollars from Primark. And there's lots of places that you can get cheap blush from. I'm always going to go back to Shop Miss A because everything on there is a dollar. So I got this one from Shop Miss A. Um, this one is the Malibu Gits one. And it's a nice like rosy shade, which is also good for our skin tone. So once the blush is applied, our next step is highlighter. This again is from the drugstore. This is Makeup Revolutions Gold Bar. And this highlighter, I don't really use it that much, but it is pigmented. When you're a beginner, try not to use too much of a loose highlighter because sometimes it can be hard to blend out and you want something that you can easily build up and blend rather than something that you put on and it's hard to blend out. I had that problem when I was starting out. These highlighters, not for beginners, don't do it. When doing highlighter, you can go ahead and use a blush brush like this, or you can go ahead and use a fan brush, okay? Those are the two, I guess, recommended because you can do this in an angle right there. But for me, I've never used it. I've never liked the way how it sit. I have used this but I want to keep it clean for another video or else I would have used this guys but I'm going to For today I'm going to use a normal fluffy blending brush or I am starting like right here and you see that I am building okay when I started I used to do this then I used to circle the whole of my cheek no don't do it you see how that looks already no I just do like a strip and I probably can't even fix this now. I'm going to highlight my chin 
I'm going to highlight the top of my lips. And I'm going to highlight my forehead. Just because I am extra, but you don't have to do this if you're a beginner. So this is me, shiny, 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 okay? You guys want to achieve this shine, just basically do the same thing that I did. Now when it comes to um, lipsticks, lip glosses and stuff, I find that nude goes with everything. Um, but let's just see, if you have a soft glam look, then you probably make your lips something that stands out. If you if you are creating a colorful eyeshadow look, you probably want your lips to be nude. So for me, I like ombre lips. Now, I actually can't find the lipsticks that I want to use. I think they're probably in my work bag, to be honest, because they're my favorite. But these are the ones that we're going to use today. These ones are from SR, SFR Color. These are cheap. I think this might be a Chinese brand. I'm not sure. I am back while I'm just waiting for my lips to mattify. Um, this is pretty much the look that we are completing today. It's finished. So this is a full face. So the last thing that I have to do is just set my face again. And that's basically just to that's basically just to seal it in. And that is it. This is how we complete a full face of our makeup for beginners. So make sure you guys kind of like stick around for the week at least. I will be doing a lot more informational videos for you guys. So yeah, just stay tuned. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe and be a part of the Empress Lee family.